Yep. Hi. So yeah, my name is Sophie, and today I'm gonna talk about building a low-code framework. As mentioned by Chandni a while ago, basically I'm gonna give a lowdown on low-code and how it can transform our approach to software development. So yeah, before I move in right away to my presentation, I just want to give you um, the key topics on what I'm gonna be discussing. So first is what is low code? What are its benefits? Examples of low code platforms, what to consider in low code development and the bright future of low code. So yeah, let's hop right in. So um, what is low code? So low code is all about changing the way companies deliver enterprise applications as it is a software development approach that requires little to no coding when building applications and processes. It actually focuses on driving innovation more rapidly. And yeah, these are big words, but I would say that this is a game changer in the software world for it speeds up the delivery of applications and optimizes development teams. But <laughs> low code does not necessarily mean that it is low in power. It actually presents a lot of features and benefits for businesses um, looking for a different or efficient application um, development. Uh, depending on the use case, it offers configurable components that can be reused into different scenarios. Um, another thing that I love about low code is that it enables different kinds of people, um, business analysts, project managers, office administrators, and others the opportunity to develop, build, and test their own apps. So as for the developers, it skips the intensive coding, um, speeding up the process of getting an implication, uh, application right to production. So um, to help us understand better, let's see what are the differences between the traditional software development and local development. So I have here um, a list. So I'll start with the traditional coding. So traditional coding refers um, with an entire team which gathers specific requirements, develop a plan, and relay it to the programmers to create custom code for an application to meet the needs of the client. Um, although the traditional approach is completely fine and an absolutely acceptable method, these projects are often complex, expensive, and are delayed due to multiple factors such as various software coding errors or bugs that we produce ourselves, or even an accurate estimation, which I know most of us are guilty. Um, testing challenges, especially if there's no dedicated QA in the team, and several infrastructure delays, among others. Um, furthermore, a traditional development approach requires a continuous um, maintenance cycle by the developers to keep the custom software application secure and up to date. So these ones are just a few examples of what traditional software development is, and I am sure most of us, if not all, are familiar with these challenges. So um, unlike the heavy coding requirements of the traditional development, low code actually uses an intuitive interface that requires little coding um, to enable faster development and delivery. As you can see here, all the words I'm mentioning are fast, um, uh, are easy to use. Basically, that's what low code is. So instead of you just staring at your IDE workspace um, when doing traditional development, low code also uses visual tools and interfaces with simple logic and drag and drop features instead of extensive coding. So again, rather than writing thousands of complex code and syntax, you can use low code to build complete applications with modern user interfaces, integrations, and logic. Another um, quality of low code is that um, the app quality is ensured as lesser bugs are produced since most of the components are um, already pre-made or built by the platform. It, for me, it elevates uh, the value of developers, enabling agile teams to understand better how to create and maintain high quality applications while they, they have enough time to try out different technologies. And also, it is typically run and maintained by the company that owns the platform. So maintenance and support is hardly an issue as long as it is turned over to the development team properly. 
So to put it simply, low code is a way for the development teams to get more things done. Um, with that, teams can spend more time creating and building and spending lesser time on repetitive work. As um, what our principle, one of our development principles says, the dry, or meaning do not repeat yourself, low code um, solves that problem. So yeah, to further uh, understand how uh, how do low code platforms work, I have here a few examples of them. So as they are a diff, uh, good alternative to the conventional software development, these platforms have grown in popularity. So I have here, um, the out systems. Out systems of offer a clean and simple user interface. Um, they also support a wide range of business use cases. So it's one of the mo most popular um, low code platforms we have right now. Um, here is also Appian. Um, one of the things that uh, sets them separate is that they have a DevOps security built in in their low code platform. And the one that I'm going to demo to you in a while is our very own Attaché Docs, which is an in-house product by Monster Lab Manila. It helps, uh, the goal is to help firms uh, go digital by converting manual paperwork into digital format. So um, I have here a short demo of Attaché in action. As you can see um, in the right side, there's a panel of what we call the form elements, which contains a wide selection of headings, input fields, upload buttons, tables, and the like. So basically all the elements that you need to do when you create an application. And here I am adding a new field called the project head. So again, using Attaché, I can easily declare the rules and validations on the field without having to code it one by one especially if the developer assigned is not that good in HTML or CSS. So with this, every time we get requests for additional requirements, we can just easily add it in our form builder, um, the one that I am showing you, and then we can right away ask for client feedback. Yeah. And then you may think that isn't this just Google Form in a fancy way? Um, actually, local platforms such as Attaché offers more than that. As you can see, there is a work um, in the demo. There is a workflow definition wherein you can draw a workflow, and the application will automatically follow the activities upon user trigger. Um, platforms. Ha most of the local platforms has their set specializations. Um, for Attaché Docs, its strengths are mostly consultancy projects, um, usually from government clients here in the Philippines. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is a flowchart of a land profiling management system used by one of the government agencies here in Manila. Yes. OK, so um, this are the, yeah. Um, once we're done defining the fields and the workflows needed, here's the client-facing screen where the actual users of the application can input data. So again, all of the text fields, the buttons that you see here were mostly made by Attaché. Um, we, the general layout, we didn't have to um, do the base HTML and CSS from scratch because, again, it was pre-made by our local platform. Um, we, whenever the client has a certain customizations, we just in, add it into the base code that the local platform produces. So it's easier for us develop again. It's easier for us developers to produce a product and ask for client feedback. As for the tech stack, we use the following technology. So for the front end, we use Java um, and Spring Framework. For the database, we use MySQL. For the indexing and searching, this is actually very important since um, the local platform produces different forms and accepts different entries from um, the client, man, the many clients that uses it. We need to have, uh, we need to use the ELK stack or the Elastic, Logstash, and Kibana stack for us to be able to index the entries faster. And then for the front end, we use Angular and SAS. And for the um, improvements of the app to check if it is um, okay in terms of uh, launching it in mobile or check the quality of our local platform at the shade docs, even if it has um, its dynamic uh, components. So 
yeah, um, with this experience of making this uh, platform for almost three to four years, here are some of the things that I want to share you or you may want to consider when you're going to build a local a uh, low code platform or even use one. So the first thing I want to share is about visual modeling. It may sound technical, but it actually just pertains to the user interface because um, as you can see on the previous demo, the user interface is very, very important since um, we want to make it effortless for the user, for them to build complex UI and provide a seamless user experience. So we want to let the users know how their applications look right away as they build it. So again, they can um, see and improve the things that they need to do using the local platform. So a good UI is really a must. The next thing I want to um, uh, to share is regarding the security and future proofing of your low code platform. So no matter how functional and user friendly a low code tool is, if it's not secure, it's basically not a sufficient solution. So it actually just applies as well to our traditional um, made apps. So make sure that the, your local platform offers proper security to protect the apps that you're building before you start using it. Um, local platforms enforce security processes and audit trails, or in our end, we call it an audit log, um, regardless of the hosting solution that they use. So again, this should always be kept in mind. And then lastly, that I want you to consider is regarding with the integration, um, of the existing systems to your local platform. Of course, we do not want to limit um, us developers by using uh, low code. It should be able to make our work easier. Um, we should take into consideration future requests for additional enhancements. So um, we need to make our base code as extensible as possible. Um, most low-code platforms allow existing services to be called through APIs, so that is a good service, and it should also provide access to the app data and its other different services. It also it is also good to consider to have a good cross-platform compatibility to be able to integrate to the existing system, for example, of the client um, to your um, low-code platform app. So um, regarding this, we actually experience uh, with regards to the integration, we actually ex experienced this one with our current with my current project now. Um, we use Attaché to build the um, initial stage of the application. And yeah, it was definitely faster. The turnaround time is um, faster than our uh, initial schedule. And then one of uh, our clients requested to integrate six of their systems to the attache. And then, yeah, we were able to use it using stored procedures and API. So really that is a uh, must have feature on a low code platform. Yeah, so low code when done right, number one, it can increase productivity and speed, which is what we all want. We want to meet our client schedules or project schedules. Um, and we want to, of course, improve our productivity as developers. Um, using low code can also have us the flexibility to app changes, as I've shown you before. Uh, using the drag and drop features, whenever a client wants to change a label or um, validations of the field, you can do it right away. Um, instead of um, having to go through the entire code and look for um, the HTML tags or the JavaScript um, validations that you need to check. And it can also help you gain improve hindsight. As I've said before, the turnaround time using low code platforms is quick, uh, much faster. So you can have back-to-back um, -back conversations with your client on what they wanted to really see or what they expect in their um, applications and faster time to market. So um, local platforms is also useful for when creating MVPs or the minimum viable product. Um, you can create different use, ca use cases using your platform. So whenever you want to market different industries, low code is the way to go. And it can also reduce project costs um, as we added all this um, 
uh, advantages, again, the end goal as well is to reduce the project cost. So our client is happy, we are happy, so everybody is happy. So yeah. For the future of low code, I believe um, there's a market study by Forrester that expects the market for local development platforms to increase by $21.2 billion by 2022. So it's actually a big gap from the previous revenue of $3.8 billion last 2017. Another study by Gartner that in 2024, 75% of large enterprises will be using at least four code development, uh, sorry, um, at least four low code development tools. So I believe that with the ever increasing and evolving market and customer de demands, many organizations have already started low code solutions. Actually, um, Google has one. Uh, it's actually a no-code platform, but it's kind of similar with low-code. They created the app sheet. So as you can see, bigger companies such as Google are also heading into that direction. And yeah, the growth for this kind of platforms really has increased, especially since we're all working from home. The demand for tech is really high and we need to improve our turnaround time for development projects so businesses or business problems can be solved quickly. So yeah, actually for my final words, if you're gonna consider local platforms, I really suggest since it's getting better as your tech progresses, it is also becoming increasingly apparent that this type of rapid application development will continue to grow. So with that, I would like to relate, relate to you that understanding the advantages and disadvantages of low code can help organizations progress their digital strategies quicker and easier than before. So yeah, that's it for my presentations. Uh, do you have any questions so far? <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. Uh, we do have some questions, so I'm just gonna put okay. them up on the screen. Okay. So the first question is coming in from Roxana. Okay. Um, do you think low code will replace traditional software development? Oh, that's, yeah, that's actually a good question. I believe it will not replace the traditional software development. I would think that it will just be a hand-in-hand, -hand, um, low-code develop, a uh, hand-in-hand -hand development. Low-code can help you um, pr uh, start er easier and earlier. And then if you have, uh, if the client wants to have um, specific customizations on the application, then you can, um, add the traditional software development on top of it. So it will be a hand-in-hand -hand work. So yeah, I hope that answers your question, Roxana. I hope it does. The next mm -hmm. one uh, we have is from Abu. What's the difference between CMS-based applications and low-code platform? Mm -hmm. OK, CMS is the content management, if I'm Right, right. So um, local platform is actually can actually cater to different kinds of industries. Um, and I believe CMS is just focused on the content, much like WordPress, if uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, for the local platforms, it it can support different kinds of industries like the one we have the one that i presented it's land profiling management system um, we also have an experience with the legal or case management system document management system can also be supported so it ranges it has support to more um, kinds of industries right the next one we have is what are the limitations of low code oh yeah actually one of the limitations of low code or one of the arguments that some of um, the tech industry is saying is that low code can actually limit us developers, um, especially since you already have a pre-built components or a pre-built app for you. It may be limited, limiting to the developers that want to try different kinds of approach. But then again, um, we need to always keep in mind that when doing or using a local platform, you should check if it is as extensible as it can be. So if you wanted to add, again, more specific customizations, um, it will not be a hassle for the developer. So, yeah. Great. Um, I have here someone asking for what's your recommended local platform? 
Oh, um, yeah, we actually have an in-house, as I mentioned, we have an in-house product called Attaché. Um, yeah, um, also OutSystems is a good competitor, as well as Appian. There's also um, Bubble that io if you wanted to check so there's actually a lot it's a booming industry so it would be great also to do your research depending on your specific needs so yeah you have a lot of options great maybe one more question yep wow i must say you have a lot of love on the comments you have a lot of great wow. great comments and appreciation <laughs> <laughs> Mm. We have one more uh, question, which is asking, what's the difference between low code and no code? Oh, yeah, yeah. So what, what I've mentioned, um, Google actually created their very own no code platform, which is AppSheet. So the main difference is that um, lo no code, from the name itself, it you don't have to do anything like you don't have to do to add any coding it's all made for you so you just have to drag and drop the components and boom you have an application meanwhile in low code um it's much more flexible since again you can add your own customizations on the pre-made app for that's built using the low code platform so i would say yeah if you are a developer and you want to make your life easier low code is the way to go but for business analysts project managers no code is um the most fit for you so yeah right well thank you thank you sophie and thank, thank you, you to everyone for all your questions and comments mm -hmm. um make sure you are taking part in our conversations on twitter and slack as well and yep. with that i will say thank you to sophie <laughs> thank you bye, thank sophie. you Chani. yep bye. thank you to everyone as well bye